Welcome to this session on snap physics, and today we're talking about moments. Okay, so here's our first question. The figure below shows the motorcycle and rider. The motorcycle is in contact with the road at points A and B. So points A, the first front wheel, there's a normal contact force acting upwards there, and point B, there's a normal contact force acting upwards there as well. Those two forces have not been drawn on the diagram. The motorcycle has a weight of 1,100 newtons, and the rider's weight is 780 newtons. That's already given on the diagram. So sometimes translating this whole diagram, the construction lines, the distances, and the forces, can sometimes this can sometimes confuse us a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very simply redraw this scenario using kind of a standard beam example. So here's our beam. We've got a support at A, we've got a support at B. Somewhere along it, there is a force acting downwards, which is 1,100 newtons. And somewhere along it, there's another force, which is acting, which is 780 newtons. The distance of the 780 from point B is 0 0.35, as it says in the question, 0 0.35 meters. And I've got another distance, which is just here, 1,100, which is... 0.6 meters. Okay, so that's our question translated. Two forces currently acting, but there's another two that we have need to draw on, and that is one force acting upwards at point A, the normal contact force due to A. Okay, let's just call this force at A, and there's another force acting upwards, force, normal contact force from the ground acting on the tire at B. So there's two forces going up, two forces going down. That's the full picture. First question, it says, state the principle of moments. Nice and simple first question. So we need to use our memory recall, but this is a two mark question. So I must say this first, and that is for a system in equilibrium. Okay, and by say equilibrium, we're telling the examiner that effectively there are no resultant moments. So there's no resultant moments in this scenario. All the clockwise and anticlockwise resultants are exactly anticlockwise moments are exactly the same. So the second part would be so the second part would be the sum of the clockwise moments. is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. Okay, just bear with my ugly writing. This is one mark for system in equilibrium. Okay, that's really important. The sum, okay, mentioning the sum of the clockwise and the sum of the anti-clockwise, I have to mention all of that in order to get the second mark. So that's quite simple. For the first part of the question. Okay, so this is part B of the question. We've now been asked to calculate the moment of the rider's weight about B. So we're taking moments about B. So I'm just going to highlight B. Okay, we're taking moments about B. It means that effectively the force FB we can forget about for the minute because the distance of force FB from B is zero. So the moment of force B, no matter how big that force is, is going to be zero. So I've got two things to worry about. One is the moment of the rider's weight. The rider's weight. So that's the 780 I'm worried about. That force is important. And the other distance is 0 0.35. So I'm going to use 700. Whoops. I'm going to first get a pen. I'm going to use 780 newtons. Okay. I'm going to times it by the distance, which is 0 0.35 meters. So 780 times by... 0 0.35 gives me 273. So the answer is 273. Another mark here, two marks. Mm, probably a unit. So it's got to be Newton meters, Newton meters. How do I get this? Well, I'm using the standard formula, which is the moment of a force is equal to its force, the force, times by the perpendicular distance from the pivot. That's really important. It's got to be a perpendicular distance from the pivot. That's 
Part B, quite easy again. Okay, part C. This is actually four marks, this particular part of the question. But take a moment, it's about B. About B. Calculate the vertical force that a road exerts on the front tyre at A. And we've got to use an appropriate number of significant figures. So what are we after? We're after the force FA. So we're trying to find this force here. Okay, so we need to use the principle of moments. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to write down. So you guys need to write this in full. But I'd write total clockwise moments equals total anti-clockwise moments. Okay. So what are the clockwise moments? Well, clockwise would tend to move the system clockwise. So we're taking moments about B. So if we're pivoting about B, force FA would tend to move the entire system clockwise, wouldn't it? Yeah? So we've got force... A times by its distance from B, which in the diagram is this distance here, 1.3. Okay, that's the total clockwise moment. Are there any clockwise moments left? Well, no, that's the only one. Equals the anti-clockwise moment. So that's the 1,100 force is anti-clockwise. That would tend to pivot the entire thing in the anti-clockwise direction. And so would the 780. Okay, so both of these forces are anti-clockwise forces. So we've got 1,100 times by its distance from B, which is 0 0.6, as we've seen before, 0 0.6, plus, okay, because it's the sum, it's the sum, so we've got to include the other one as well, so 780 times by 0 0.35 meters, okay? So if we do the maths, 1,100 times by 0 0.6 gives us 660, so this is 660 plus 780 times by 0 0.35, which gives us 273, we did that one before, didn't we? Equals FA, FA equals all of that, divided by 1.3, which gives our final answer for force FA has been 273 plus 660, divided by 1.3, which gives us 717.6. But I must give my answer to an appropriate number of significant figures, so I think 2SF probably is okay here. So let's just say 720. We'll round this to 7. 20 newtons okay so where are the marks here well there's one mark for stating the principle there's one mark for substituting the correct values in one mark for the final answer and one mark for the significant figures okay this final mark i think newtons was already given to you so there wasn't a mark here for the units okay nice and simple next one Okay, so the next part of the question, part D, the last part, says, calculate the vertical force that the road exerts on the rear tyre at B. So we're after, now, we're after this force over here, we're after FB. So I'm going to do it the long way by taking moments about A. Okay, so let's take... So again, we're going to start off by saying the total anti-clockwise moments equals the total clockwise moments. We're going to identify what I... Anti-clockwise moments, so we're taking moments about A right now, so it's pivoting about A. So we've got two forces which will tend to push the system in a clockwise direction, and that is the 1100 and the 780. Again, visualize this is just a wooden kind of board or, you know, ruler, which is pivoting about point A. Those two forces would tend to move the system clockwise. This force, force FB, would tend to move the system upwards and hence it would tilt the whole system in an anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so my anti-clockwise moments here, so I've got force FB times by its distance from pivot A, which is going to be 1.3. That's going to be equal to 1,100 times by its distance from point A, because we're taking moments about A, okay, remember? which means that's 0 0.7 plus the second, which is 780 times by its distance, 0 0.95 from A as well. Okay, so this gives us the rest now. It's just the pure math. The physics is already done. This is 770 plus 780 times by 0 0.95, which gives us 741. And the force FB should equal all of that divided by 1.3. So simple math going on it. Plus 770 divided by 1.3 which gives an answer of 1162 newtons. Okay, that is the right answer. Okay, so there is an easier way of doing this. We could have actually said here, resolving vertically. Okay, so another way we could do this, it's just a cheap method, but you can use this as well. Resolving vertically. Well, if the system's in equilibrium, 
and there's no resultant moment, then all the forces upwards should equal all the forces downwards, right? So FA plus force FB should be equal to 1,100, the force going down, and another force going down, which is 780. Well, we know that force FA, we worked out in a previous question, didn't we? Which is 720, okay? So if you did exactly the same maths there, you'd get pretty much exactly the same answer as well. So this is another way of doing the same question. Okay, over and out. Thank you very much indeed for listening. Stay tuned for Moments Part 2.